Hey guys, welcome back to another uh, podcast of Rant and Bollocks. Um, it's been it's been a while again, but uh, you know that's what we do, and that's what we do best. But, uh, <laughs> how's how's everything going with you, Paul? It's going good. That's the way of putting it. If you don't want regular content, you come to us. <laughs> we have perfected that. Although we're getting better, because this is like what two weeks since the last one, and the last one was six months since the previous. So like two weeks is better than six months. We're narrowing that wide gap yes. to a huge gap. We'll definitely get it down <laughs> to a week at a time. In future, we will. Yes, for sure. And now we've got these arms on the mics where we can just lay back. You know, I'm lying down in bed. Not really, but, you know, I could yeah. almost do that. So I, He is lying uh, down in yeah. bed. I'm across the street looking at him, and I can tell you right now he's lying down <laughs> in bed. I thought you were going to say you were next to me. <laughs> it's like, that would be even worse, though, wouldn't it? So like, I'm lying next to you with my arm as well. Yeah. So. What kind of arm is that, Alex? <laughs> it's very long. So if you hear anything snake. in the background, it's either the back of Alex's place or the back of my place. But we just decided we're just going to use technology to our advantage for a change so we can get the podcast out and annoy people regularly. We need to do this while we can because Cybernet will take us eventually true true and that's that's something that's something we'll talk about because i got an alexa your phone's been listening to you they're listening to our podcast right now it know? always is yeah yeah cybernet's just sub- subscribed hasn't it how many people out there are going to have a story about that of how they just said something in a conversation and then they're going to their facebook or their instagram feed and then an ad for whatever it is pops up like i have had that oh yeah happen literally to me i'm like speaking to somebody i didn't search for it on the internet i just speak to somebody and then the next day i have it come up i take screenshots of it and i show my friends to make them believe i'm like they're listening they're always listening oh yeah 100 percent, man i mean uh i'd honestly say that happens maybe every week uh every week someone in my office says oh it was listening to me because i see this i see that uh it's it's what you're saying it's what you're it's what other people are saying it's what you're searching as well uh it, yeah it's pretty mental and you could play tricks on people this is a little little tidbit if someone leaves their phone at a desk it has to be for uh like a certain amount of time like an hour or so but if you keep talking about a certain subject around their phone if their phone's on uh when they get back they'll see those ads there's bound to be a time that we've been on our phone and we've seen an ad for maybe shoes or something and it's because of people around us we might not connected to it but it's like oh you know like your girlfriend and you might have been like oh she was talking about that jacket, and now it's coming up on my bloody feed, you know? Ah, so that's what it is. The so. sneaky bastards. Yeah. I mean, I know you like your leather jackets, man, but you know, yep. it might not just be you. So. Yeah, it's the it's the leather shoes that are the ones that surprises me. Like, well, I don't like shoes. And, I walk around barefoot. And and the masks as well, you know, yeah. that's something else. That's different. But that's, that's because that's cause we were with Steve, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what do we want to get into um, this week? I just thought, um, actually, there's one thing I wanted to talk about, and I've been dying to talk to you about it for a while, and there's been a guy at work that wants me to talk to you uh, uh, about this, uh, and I will send him the link to this as soon as it's up, but uh, I wanted to talk McGregor. Oh, no. Because it's been a while, and also I just wanted to talk, we've almost t- turned into like a bit of a boxing uh, podcast slash UFC, because there's lot, lots of boxing stuff happening yeah. before... Um, before christmas but i just wanted to talk to you about that because obviously he's a huge star he's a huge uh irish star as well i didn't watch the match live because i think it was two or three in the morning i watched it back there's a lot of commotion what was your i just wanted to hear your thought on it i know you can probably rant about this yeah uh, i did i did find it funny because i've met you i've met you <laughs> i've seen you maybe three or four times since it we've never talked about it so i just wanted to what 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 the fuck happened um and what was your view on it uh, for what it, for people who don't follow UFC real quick, McGregor's a big star. He was fighting this Russian dude called Khabib Nurmagomedov. I said that wrong. But during the build up, McGregor was like a he's he's a mouthy guy. And he does that so he can get a lot of press and he gets a lot of sales. But he kind of pushed the envelope a little bit. He made a few comments that were a bit too far. Didn't agree with it. And then it all goes back to what happened earlier in the year, which people probably remember he was arrested. He was arrested because he attacked a bus with some buddies of his in which Khabib was actually in the bus. So there's all allegations around McGregor. You know, maybe he's got a substance abuse problem. He's on cocaine. Maybe he was drunk. Maybe just he's full of himself because he thinks he can't be touched. 
this that was not a good situation that was embarrassing for like yeah. a fans of mcgregor and irish people were just like what are you doing you don't need to do that that went too far he was kind of pushing what he was saying about khabib's family and all this during the build-up on the flip side of that you got to remember khabib is from dagestan he speaks russian i think very little english he's not great with the banter he's not great with <clears throat> sorry he's not great with talking back to people or giving you those like quick uh ad-lib moments that are going to be funny that are going to be shown around the world he's not like great at the press conferences and stuff yeah, yeah he's not great at promoting and as, okay. as much as people want to talk about you know it's a fight it's a real it's a it's a sport that you pay for and you're only going to pay for something that's entertaining and mcgregor is entertaining people want to see him lose they'll pay people want to see him win they'll pay khabib is like undefeated but how many people knew about him last year it's just he it doesn't he doesn't come on the radar of the average fan so right. i think it kind of fell to mcgregor to sell the fight and he probably sold it a bit too hard the, sure. pro the problem with mcgregor's style versus khabib is khabib has one thing that he does incredibly well and it's the one thing mcgregor has no training in so he was always at risk and there's a great um interview that mcgregor's coach coach kavanaugh did he did it on the joe rogan podcast it was two days right after the fight so he's fresh in his mind and he's talking about everything that went wrong so, yeah so like any hardcore ufc fans would be like all right this is they trained the wrong way they didn't go the right way at it and that's true i don't think mcgregor was on his thing but not to get into too much detail and all that just for me watching it it didn't look like connor wanted to be there he didn't look mm. like he all he usually looks where he's got that strut where he's got that confidence in himself that he's going to go out there and be a star did he do it for a paycheck because he he signed um uh for someone that doesn't know ufc super well he was away from ufc for a long long time two years uh, yeah um and then he came back and and correct me if i'm wrong but he has signed a five fight deal a five year a five year or i think or it's a five promise fights or something something like that yeah because he's yeah he has shares now with uh ufc so he makes money right off not only what he's getting paid for the fight, he makes money off the pay-per-view and he makes money yeah. from shares in the company. So it's in his best interest to keep the UFC going. Okay. Uh, he's also I, selling his whiskey. His whiskey's ads are all over that. Oh, yeah. What, what, what is his whiskey? Because I saw him drinking it during a press, uh, press conference. Is it called Proper or something? Proper 12. Yeah. Twop, proper 12. And is that only available in Ireland or can you get that over here in Canada? He's, he's rolling out like a, a tour right now. He went to the Dallas Cowboys he was there at their stadium when they won two weeks ago. He was in, I think, Detroit as well. He's just going to see the city around America releasing it and showing it off. Started Very in cool. Ireland, and you could buy it in America during the fight. And I think now he's rolling it out across the world. Have you had some? I have. It is not bad. I actually really like it. I'm not, okay. a, right. I'm not a whiskey connoisseur, but I've heard some whiskey yeah. people saying it's terrible. It's no good. And then I've heard the flip side of that where some somebody was saying, uh, everybody who likes whiskey is a snob and they hate all new whiskeys. Just like people yeah. who are big sommeliers and love wine will say, oh, this brand new wine is crap just because they don't want the new guy to have any credit. I can see that. Well, one thing with whiskey, again, I'm the same as you. I'm not a connoisseur at all. I do, I do like one every now and again. Uh, bottle and name is like, uh, for me, I just like, if it's got a cool name and it's got a nice little design, I'll probably purchase it just to try it, you know. And if it's if it's tasty, I'll get it again. But yeah, uh, if it's a boring bottle and just a generic name, even like I'll just be like, ah, I'll just walk past it on a shelf because I'm not into my whiskeys. But uh, but uh, I do like that name. That's kind of cool. So if it comes to Canada, I have to try it out. I think it'll be. But here at some back point. to the back to back to the fight though. Um, uh, that happens in uh, boxing as well with the the your heart's not in it it uh, it could just be a paycheck and that's even happening right now with fights uh like tyson fury with wilder uh december the first uh, a lot of people are talking that fury's just taking that fight because of the money it's a big paycheck uh but we'll see because he's quite a random character but uh yeah okay so you you were saying basically he he wasn't all there he was probably doing it for a paycheck. I don't even um, know if it was a paycheck. It, it's just like, at this point, you can say he's not there. Is he not there because he doesn't care? Then why is he going into a ring to get his head bet in? Is he not there because he's already made $130 million or whatever? Like, if you've got that much money, 
do you really want to get up in the morning five o'clock go for a jog do your training six hours a day you know mm. is it there and he doesn't need the money yeah no that's true you know? yeah ufc ufc make a lot more money than uh, boxing don't yeah. they he's he's definitely got a um He's got the mentality where he does want to be the best, but I just don't know if his heart's in it. And then there's also the flip side. Like I said, his coach said they didn't prepare the right way. They were a little bit too defensive. That's not the kind of fighter Connor is. Maybe they went the wrong way about that. On the topic yeah. of money, though, he's he's the number one draw in UFC by a country mile. Mm, so yeah. for that fight, I think he made $3 million as a purse. So Very it's not cool. that yeah. much money compared to boxing. No, that that one wasn't, no. I no. guess, yeah, because you see Mayweather and Pacquiao was like 50 or something. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, Mayweather uh, McGregor was like 50. Yeah. Million. And like, and uh, Canelo just signed a deal with uh, DAZN, the streaming sports channel. So all yeah. his fights are there, exclusive. He got, I think it's a $365 million deal for like five years or something. Oh, that's awesome. Well, like, I know uh, I know boxing wise, uh, Eddie Hearn, he does a lot of the big boxing matches in England. He is now on the zone as well. So the zone is is massive. And you were you were on that. You got me on that as well. Uh, yeah. So if you are in the States and Canada and you want to watch these uh, boxing matches, uh, the zone is your place. I think I believe it's like 100, 120 for a year subscription, but you'll see lots of fights. Great quality. Uh, we, we've been watching them. Anthony it's Joshua definitely worth them it. All as yeah. well. So. Yeah, big time. Like, uh, which uh, which kind of brings me on to my uh, next subject of um, like we y- you purchased a zone, uh, zone because you wanted to watch the fights. We don't want to find some kind of illegal channel or whatever. Uh, how is your hunt for HBO? Cause oh, the stupid HBO! <laughs> Paul was at, after HBO. He texted me one day and he uh, at work and he was just like, "Do you know anyone with cable uh, with cable TV?" And I haven't had TV since I came to Canada. It's all streaming. All my friends are streaming apart from like maybe two. Uh, but you wanted to get HBO. And I found this hilarious because like, yes, we all torrent. I torrent quite a bit. But um, Paul wanted to go legit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What's your story, man? Like what, what happened? I don't even know what happened. Did you end I was up looking HBO? For, what, what was the show I was looking at? I can't remember what exactly. It might have been Barry or it might have been whatever. I was thinking, oh, they've also got The Terror and I have to finish that. And they've got... Um, uh, Silicon Valley, and then obviously Game of Thrones is coming. I'm not a big Game of Thrones guy, so that wasn't the big selling point. But it's just like they got a lot of good shows. You know what? I pay for my Netflix, I pay for my DAZN. I might as well go get HBO, and then I don't have to fart around. I can watch it whenever I want at my convenience. By the time I text you, I had spent an hour trying to figure out how to buy this thing legally in Canada. I was like, "Can I so just crazy? Can I just buy the app? No. Can I just get the app on my TV? No. You need it. You need this." And I was like, okay, what if I get the American one and I'll use a VPN? I'll still pay for it, but I'll be just pretending I'm in New York, which is only like 60 kilometers south of here. I was trying every little loophole to be like, I will pay you for it. And it just kept coming back to, you need a cable subscription. At which point I went to you and said, do you know anybody with a cable subscription? I will pay for their package to include HBO every month. (laughs) If they just give me their login details. I won't watch anything else. I will just watch that one channel. Yeah. And we don't know anybody. There's nobody that I can think of off the top of my head who was like, oh, yeah, they've got cable. It's absolutely nuts. Um, uh, and the VPN didn't work then, no? I didn't even try it. I'm just like, oh, this is this should not be this hard to give people money. It's stupid that you have to do that just to get that working. Yeah. So. In 2018, uh, uh, yeah. for a, a network that's as big as HBO around the world, that you can't just be like, here, here's $20 a month or $10 or whatever you want. Yes, yeah. Like, they don't. We have the money. We want. Yeah. We want to give you this. So and it's like, nah, just leave it. Just. Leave I don't it. even have the money, but I want to give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I just want to finish um, up with that McGregor thing. That what everyone's oh, yeah. probably talking about is the 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 finale of it. He lost in the fourth round. He submitted, which was going to happen. I think if he didn't knock him out in the first two rounds, I I felt he didn't have the chance of finishing it. Maybe sure. his game plan didn't go wherever it was. He submitted. A few to, I think like a week later, he was on Instagram. He gave his rundown of the fight as well. The problem happened was that Khabib, who's generally a quiet, like reserved guy, he'd been so worked up by the emotion of the pre-fight and the press conferences, which McGregor's the best at, that even though everybody thought Khabib wouldn't, he clearly snapped 
The fight's over. Yeah. He's won. McGregor's tapped out. He takes out his mouth guard. He's throwing it at um, McGregor's corner. One of the guys in McGregor's corner is like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It kind of like beckons him like, yeah, come on and then get me if you think you're hard enough. All this stuff. Yeah. Khabib, who's already won the fight, jumped the fence and tried to drop kick a guy in the head. Yeah. And from yeah. the middle of that, his corner goes crazy. His manager, his trainers, they're all jumping in. As they're jumping in, McGregor's trying to see what the hell's going on. Basically, Khabib just started this riot. McGregor got punched in the back of the head. McGregor got hit by people mm. who shouldn't be in the ring. Yeah. People, people might say, oh, McGregor threw the first punch. No, he didn't. Khabib threw the first punch. He jumped off the ring to try and kick somebody in the face. One oh, of yeah, McGregor's best friends. So M- Khabib started it because of what happened there. Khabib hasn't got his money from the fight or he's only got half the money so far. They've both been suspended. Right. There's an investigation from the Nevada State Commission to say how big of a suspension they're going to get. Khabib has said he's going to you know, quit if UFC... I think one of, yeah, one of Khabib's teammates fights in the UFC. UFC says, that guy's never going to fight here again. He punched McGregor in the head. He had no right to do that. Yeah. Then Khabib's like, oh, I'm going to quit if you do that. He's my friend. It's all up in the air what's happening, but from what it looks like it's it's one of those weird situations where everybody in the world now knows who Khabib Nurmagomedov is simply because he sure. did the stupidest thing of his career yeah yeah and that, i mean that's the thing that made the headlines more it was it wasn't even really like yeah. obviously mcgregor lost but it was more that he jumped into the crowd like yeah. people were like oh i heard someone jumped into the crowd it wasn't oh mcgregor lost it was more oh they got so there was a crowd fight or whatever you know so that actually kind of if in a, uh, like ruined his win in a way, so uh, yeah, yeah that, that's 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 a shame, I guess. Yeah, but, it's um, just one of those things with notoriety. Like, how many people know who uh, Mike Tyson beat to get the world title? Mm. But they all know that Tyson bit the ear off of Vander Holyfield. Sure, exactly. Yeah, it's one of those things of like the thing that you should be known for is not the thing that you're known for. You're known for the worst part of your perform or not performance, but just the darkest part of your personality yeah and uh and did you you said that mcgregor was on joe rogan's podcast mcgregor's uh coach john cavanagh and john cavanagh's oh, coach like, was okay okay he's like the polar opposite of mcgregor mcgregor is everyone's like oh he's a typical irish man mcgregor's not a typical anything he's a very unique individual we'd all yeah. li- we'd all like to think that we're all that outgoing and confident whatever irish people are not quite like that we probably have the sharp wit but we're not like he is. I'd say if anybody represents Irish people more, it's Kavanaugh, his coach. He has yeah, a joke. Okay, okay. He's reasonable. He's level-headed. He's like, you know, I can't defend McGregor when he's being a dickhead, and I can't defend Khabib when he's being an idiot. But the real issue is the people that were like punching Connor in the in the ring. Like, you can't yeah. do that. Khabib, no, no, Khabib didn't all. actually hit anybody, as far as I know. They were pushing and shoving or whatever. But McGregor's a guy who just went four rounds in a world fight. And you're punching him in the back of the head. Like, that's assault at the end of the day. It's assault yeah. and battery. And, you know, like these fighters, they're, they're, they're training, they're fit. They're, they're role models as well. So you can't... And as that uh, Khabib would have been a role model for a lot of people. So getting out of the ring and trying to fucking knee someone in the face oh, yeah. flying from the arc- octagon doesn't do anyone any good, you know? So It really doesn't uh, help yeah. that uh, in the crowd where he was leaping into to try and kick... Uh, Dylan Dennis, the guy, the McGregor's mm. friend in the face. The crowd yeah. was all getting evacuated by police. In the crowd yeah. that night was the Nevada State Commissioner. Right. So it's the guy who's like who said the fight would be great, you know, it's okay for them to fight. And then he went to see the actual UFC and then this breaks out in front of him. He's like, Oh my god. So he could just drop <laughs> he could Lord. he can drop the hammer on Khabib because the way fights work is that a fight is a fight. It's illegal. The government gives you a license to fight the nevada state commission in this case so it's their job to say okay this person can fight this person tonight for money the police won't get involved that's yeah. that's all it is so that has nothing to do with the ufc the ufc don't control the law they don't same with boxing the wba they have to get licenses to fight right so if nevada comes out and says khabib Nurmagomedov cannot fight again for five years there's nothing the ufc can do about it yeah, he's screwed. Yeah, he's screwed. Well, have to see where that goes, I guess. Yeah, 
I don't think it's going to be too harsh. Like he's not going to have a problem, but I think the UFC will come down hard on his teammates as they should. Mm. And especially if one fights in the UFC and then he jumped in the ring and whacked uh, McGregor in the back of the head, like, sorry, mate, but if you had a fight lined up, it al- canceled. already canceled. He was already kicked off it. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I 100% agree in that. And also like, yes, obviously McGregor was talking a game and, and, and being an ass before it and stuff like that i mean that's kind of half half uh like fighting anyway to get into someone's head uh i don't know how kind of deep he went and how rude he went like if he's insulting families and shit like that but um he got he got like mcgregor got like choked out basically so he would have been like pretty disorientated then he gets up and someone's whacking him in the back of the head yeah everything just kicked uh, off after that and it's it's you know it's kind of a testament to mcgregor that even when he loses he doesn't lose the head he like Shows his respect. Yeah. He he has an interviews afterwards. He never hides from it. Yeah, yeah. yeah He's he. Th- it was the weird thing I said when I was watching the fight. I said he actually walked away the winner that night because M- mm. Khabib looked like an idiot. And he. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. That it came out that way. Like yeah. From just from, from skimming the. Uh, I did. I never. What I still haven't seen the fight. No. I just know what happened at the end of it. Um. And uh, all I think about is like, yeah, what a fucking you know shit show yeah exactly but i never but it wasn't you didn't see mcgregor jump out the octagon did you yeah so. that's the thing like mcgregor lost a fight nobody really gives a crap now they're just talking about mccabe being an idiot that's what i was saying he's overshadowed his win yeah like so. all he had to do was nothing and he would have just been able to gloat and brag and rub it in his face and whatever for however long he wanted and now he's just like you're an idiot yeah yeah people don't even and now there's all this now there's all this stupid fucking Khabib um, Mayweather stuff. Like I'll, uh, d- to be fair, quite a good line. Uh, I'll finish the job McGregor didn't. Yeah. Which is the May- Mayweather one. I was like, okay, that's that's pretty good advertising actually. But uh, I don't think that's ever gonna happen, um, unless I guess the money is there a big time. But like you said, uh, it doesn't look like K- Khabib is the marketer. Like he's not gonna like hype it up. No, he wouldn't. Be, uh, so he wouldn't be able to do that kind of yeah. thing. The the tour that McGregor and uh, Mayweather did where they went they came to Toronto yeah. they went to London all that stuff like Khabib's yeah, yeah. he doesn't speak good English like that's not a yeah. slight against him but that's the whole point of that tour is to be like okay people who don't understand what's going on what's happening and you and you, yeah, yeah. you lose the novelty of it being the first ever crossover so people aren't going to be interested for that and also right. people don't care about Khabib no, I mean he like he said he wasn't known before this anyway, so. No. And it's it's sad. He's a good fighter or whatever, or he's a good wrestler, but if he went yeah, in, yeah. if he went into a ring with Mayweather it'd be embarrassing. Like Mayweather wouldn't even know how to make that last 10 rounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing with UFC is like I always remember uh Kimbo Slice as well. Uh like cuz I followed him from uh <clears throat> from YouTube. Right. And uh he's just he's just a boxer and he's just a crazy good like well probably not even a good boxer he's just a brute he could take punches but uh he's very good at throwing punches but he never had a floor game so he was like in ufc he was like if i ever get taken to the floor i'm screwed you know yeah and some and and that's actually kind of what i don't like about ufc that's why i like boxing so much because it just stays that way but uh but yeah anyway each to their own but yeah uh, exciting stuff anyway um just just to finish off this kind of fighting boxing stuff uh you you mentioned um Joe Rogan, he actually had, I don't know if you've watched it, but it was very, very good. I haven't. Uh, I'm going to Ty- go to it tomorrow. Uh, Tyson Fury, right? Talk- Tyson Fury, I had Tyson Fury on there, and he talks about his mental health issues. He talks about Anthony Joshua, because he's the heavyweight. He talks about the Deontay Wilder fight on the December the 1st. Um, super interesting. I like him so much more now as well. Uh, I-, I wasn't like a huge fan of him before. Uh, I think just because uh, when he was fighting Klitschko, uh klitschko is so, so kind of reserved and like professional and tyson fury is just like he <laughs> was a bit like a mcgregor in a way he was very loud and kind of in your face but um but now that i've kind of listened to that podcast I, I like i i've always wanted him to win and beat uh wilder but even more so now like you you kind of connect with the guy a bit more after after listening to the podcast cool but he did say there was one really interesting uh thing i just thought i'd bring up on 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 here is um after he beat klitschko uh there was um they were gonna i think in the contract was like a round two kind of thing like a, a rematch and 
they were like, oh, well, where is it going to happen? Because he went to um, the Ukraine and, and did it there or whatever. It was like, oh, it'll probably come to England or maybe we'll do it in Las Vegas. But one of the venues was some Arabs, apparently, with all the money, wanted to put it on a fucking boat on a cruise ship. Really? I was like, a box? Yeah, like, so a boxing match on a cruise ship. I was just like, that's so fucking weird, you know? You've got, you've got like, the fucking, the, uh, the canvas is going to be, like, moving. So, oh. but yeah, I, I, just I think, that, I I think really that's going to happen. That's just one of those ideas that's so crazy, someone's going to make yeah. it happen. No, I know, and and just that headline at, uh, on its own is just like would sell it. Like you know, um, kind of deviating a little bit here, but the Titanic, you know, they're, they're remade the Titanic. <laughs> they're and it's rebuilding. Set it. <laughs> I think it's going to set sail in two years or a year, like quite soon. Uh, it's going on exactly the same journey and everything. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them saying like we're going to throw a big heavyweight boxing match on that as well. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, might as well. yeah, I just thought I, was, I just thought that was kind of interesting to to watch a boxing match on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. So <laughs> next one will be on an airplane, seven four seven. Good lord! Uh, just real quick for those people who are listening, and want to know that uh, Mike Tyson was twenty years old when he won the world title. He beat Burbick. Oh my god, twenty years old! Yeah, youngest champion and you're, ever. And you're one and you're one hundred percent right. I don't know where he won that title, who he beat that from. Yeah, was, but I know it who was he beat uh, Trevor. Year Trevor. Of. Not Burbank, Bur- Burbick, Trevor Burbick. He's 20 hmm. years old. Wow. Youngest fighter ever. World heavyweight that's champion. Yeah, that's crazy. He was, he was, um, like, because I, I follow Anthony Joshua a lot. He, he pops up in my feed a lot. Uh, t- um, not Tyson Fury, sorry. Uh, Mike Tyson, because, uh, yeah, he, he was aggressive as hell, just going in there and just, like, smashing people to pieces. Oh, yeah. I think, I think it was, like, in the second or third round he knocked him out like it wasn't a long fight yeah he, yeah, he yeah. just goes in and knocks you down 